Welcome back to Now or Never, Cavino and Rich. And from the movie that comes out this weekend, Primal, I'm excited about it. It's La Monica Garrett. Welcome yo, to the show. Yo. What's up, man? Thanks for having me, guys. How does it feel when Nick Cage looks at you in the eye and says, if you shoot that line, I'll break your face or whatever. I, I know I'm in a Nick Cage movie at that moment in time. Like, yeah. Don't Nick, put your hands on my cat. Yeah. My cat. Nick is that dude. Like, he, you know, you sign up for a Nick Cage film, and that's exactly what you got. Who? Where? Why? Well, oh. listen, man. With La Monica, you know, designated survivor, Sons of Anarchy, the list goes on and on. But Nick Cage, you yeah. star opposite. And, you know, with him in this movie, Yeah. give us a Nick Cage story. Uh, what, what, we were all out one night. We were at a cigar lounge. And they're like, he's a, he loves his cigars and his, yeah. uh, his, you know, nice cognacs and whatever. And we were, um, what was it? Louis the 13th. I've never had Louis. It's like expensive, crazy expensive. They're all drinking shots. And I was drinking mine, like just sipping it. Like, you know, like, no, you're just supposed to shoot it. Right. Like, I don't know when Save I'm going to have this. Every taste bud in my mouth <laughs> is going to enjoy this Louis. And then we'll figure the rest out later. He's the type of but, guy yeah. that owns the actual crown of Louis the Thirteenth. He something might, like that. yeah, he artifacts, might have had the whole, right? yeah. <laughs> like, who owns like like random artifacts from Egypt? It's like Nick Cage. Nick I Cage own does. the cross of Coronado. <laughs> Nick yeah, Cage he, does. Yeah, he's that guy. Now, now tell us your story, man, because sports sort of led you to yeah. acting, right? Yeah. How'd that happen? I played football. I always wanted to act. I did, you know, plays growing up and stuff, but. I didn't see, I've never seen actors in person, so that wasn't, like, accessible to me. Right. But I grew up behind candlesticks, so I used to go to the 49er games with my parents, and, you know, like, I see Jerry Rice, I see Ronnie Lott, like, I can be those guys, I can touch them. And, you know, I got older, I played football, I did, you know, I did pretty well, went to college, and um, worked out in the NFL, and it didn't work out for me, but... But you did well, right? I did well, like, I got there the year after I came out, Hugh Douglas came out the year before me and he just set the NFL on fire I think he was defensive rookie of the year that year so our pro day the next year like Belichick was at our school Marty Schottenheimer wow. like, you know we were working out for everybody so we all had a good look but you sports said, was in, in, in your blood from the get-go, though. Yeah, yeah. Your, your parents were big sports fans. In fact, you were, you were named after... I was named after Daryl LaMonica, yeah. Like, Bay Area, he was like Brady back then, you know, like the Mad Bomber. So, sports fans get it. Yeah, we have something in common. My brother was named after Jim Plunkett. My mom was a Jim Plunkett wow. Raiders yeah. fan. So yeah. My brother, James. What's the thing? Like, everybody being named after the Raiders. Like, they, <laughs> yeah, Raider. I think Jim Plunkett's his real dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ha hashtag real dead. That's <laughs> okay. Now, if, if, uh, if you have a son, is uh, is there any 49er quarterback name in the running or it, what? It's already in the works, yeah. Uh, Montana. Montana. No way. Hey. Yeah, Montana's going to be oh, little man's name. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. So you can't take that now. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm a big Niners fan like you. Yeah. How do you feel about the team this year? Sunday night's a big one, man. It's Monday night. I'm sorry, Monday night. Yeah, Monday night. It's, it's a huge one. Like, it was, uh, I think, the... the first biggest one was uh, Carolina, yeah. and we showed up, and I think this game we played against the Cardinals, it was a trap game, it was four days rest between the other one, and I, they might have been looking ahead to the Monday night game, yep. but they got eight, eight, what, seven, eight days off yeah. to prepare for Russell Wilson and the gang, and it's, and it's a home game. We know you're a 49ers fan, because on your social media, you were on camera, and people didn't know it was you, you were just like, yes. hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, with my jersey on, I'm in there drinking beer and having fun, and yeah, yeah, that was awesome. That, is, that was my first time at Levi, yeah. Now, I'll tell you what, you were also in a commercial playing Adris, Adrian Peterson? I was playing my buddy Isaiah Mustafa, the Old Spice guy. Yeah. He was doubling Adrian Peterson. And you were... And I was a, like a defensive back. It was a stunt we had where he had uh, some weird stuff going on. But, like, David Fincher was the director, and I had to do one of the stunts. But Adrian Peterson was there, and, like, we did commercials before we really got into acting, like, to pay bills. And we did all these football commercials, like yeah. year after year after year. They took all these ex-football guys, and we did all the crazy stunts. I had one stunt. It was insane. It was with Sean Merriman, like back when his, like, you know, the switch, you know, lights out guy. Yeah. I was a running back, and we were filming at the Rose Bowl, so it was me, like, going over the pile. I've never been hit so hard in my life. He ear -holed me, and I'm, like, laying on the ground, and I just see all these faces come in, like... You know, I'm like, did we get it? Did we get it? I was like, oh, that was awesome. I'm like, oh, man. Turn my, you know. <laughs> God. And I'm looking around like, where's Sean? I want to tell him, like, good stuff. He was back in Video Village with his legs crossed, like, just hanging out. Dude, like, he's a big ever... guy. He's been on this show twice. That dude was huge. He was working out with The Rock recently, and they're, like, the same yeah. size. So, yeah. yeah that, that, that was when I was like, I got to 
I got to get a job. Like, I got to get on a show or something because, yeah, my insurance ain't going to keep covering this. Dude, I went to your IMDb. You've been in everything. You've been in so many things. I, yeah. So many things that we think you might not remember Ooh. all of the lines. So you want to play a game? Let's play a game. It's uh, called, uh, I'm scared to I play this game. I love that line with right, LaMonica line. Okay. Garrett. We name a line. We'll read it to you. Okay. You tell us what movie or show. All right. Let's yeah. see how good you are. I will start with, come on down. I'll introduce you. Daddy's home. Oh, bam! Daddy's home. How was it with Mark Wahlberg, Will that Ferrell? Was so what was that fun. experience like? Because we love that movie, man. Fun fact about that experience: we filmed halftime at the Pelicans game with the Lakers played. Right. And we had Kobe like before the game, like doing some stuff with us with Mark and uh, Will Ferrell. You know, it was a great time. And that game in the second half or the first half is when he tore his his shoulder, and he was done for the year after that. So we're all looking around like we kind of interfered with his warm up. Oh, like, wow. We didn't have nothing to do with that, right? You know, like, <laughs> right. that wasn't us. Like it was just by chance. But that was amazing working with those guys and being in that environment in New Orleans was it was fun. Great scene, and even the sequel is great. I love that. Movie. Yeah. Monica, let me ask you though, because you're you're an accomplished actor yourself. But when you're standing there and it's Will Ferrell, Kobe, Mark Wahlberg, you're like, who am I hanging out with? Is that, a, are those weird moments for you? I'm a fan before I'm an actor. So, like, even with comic book stuff, I was a fan of comic books before. So when I'm not filming, I'm out there just watching how they work. Like, Will Ferrell, there was, like, with him, you saw how when the scene was done, they always kept the cameras rolling because he just has so many witty. Yeah. It just keeps going. And each take is different than the last take. He can do 20 takes, and they're all different. And he just ad-libs everything. Like, that's brilliance. You know what I mean? That's what I want to stick around and watch. All right. Let's see if you know this one. Next one. And their porn studio is up and running too. Stockton Port. Stockton. That sounds Van Arky. Sons of Van Arky. I heard Stockton. I was lost for a second, right. and then I heard Stockton. Now, you had a, a long arc on that show, yeah. right? So you must get called out and recognized all the time for that. I do. I did. And that was pretty pretty much my first break. Yeah. If, if, you know, if Fans you call are crazy it that. about that? It was a, yeah, yeah, the, a cult following for SOA. Yeah. And um, I was supposed to do like two or three episodes. And it just kept going. And those were the, you know, that opened the door for every other thing that I was trying to get into that I couldn't before. SOA was... So every time they kept writing you in, writing you in you're like, yes. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Until you get the final script where you're going to catch a bullet and you get a call from the producer <laughs> oh! the night before the table read. It's oh. like, yeah, something you got to know. All right. I had a good run. Right, right. right. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, how about this one? Respectfully, sir, if you don't move your feet right now, I'm going to pick you up and carry you. That was Mike Ritter. That was Designated Survivor. Designated yeah. Survivor, and you were uh, all about that I, show. I, I thought that show, that show, fantastic. Yeah, that was fun, man. That was, uh, working with Kiefer was another one of those experiences, like working with Nick, working with the SOA guys, like, these are professionals. These are seasoned veterans, and you just And you just you absorb, from, right? Yeah. yeah, you learn a lot yeah. from them. All right, one more. Survival will be found by knowing your true self. This world will be doomed like all others. Like all the others. Yeah, that's the monitor. That's uh, Arrow, Arrowverse, Elseworlds. And what is that like, man? Playing a vil- You play a villain, right? Yeah, I, well, I, I play a villain, and I, well, I play an anti-hero, and I play a, a supervillain. Right. So they're both, like, rubbing everyone the wrong way. You haven't met the uh, anti-monitor yet, but it's, it's fun. So to be a part of that yeah. must be a big thrill for this you. This was one, I could say this is one of the best experiences I've had in my career, just because I grew up a nerd just reading all this stuff. So I didn't know what I was auditioning for when I got it. Like, I thought, you know, some obscure character, they had some, you know, random character breakdowns in the list. But when I found out it was a monitor, I was like, oh, wow, like, they might do crisis. Right. You know, but it's a huge storyline in D.C. And just being a part of that is unreal. Well, a lot of exciting things yeah. ahead for you, man. Primal out this weekend. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, LaMonica Garrett at Twitter and LaMonica Garrett on Instagram. All right. Well, yeah. you're always welcome here. Primal's out. And, uh, by the way, go 49ers. Yeah. Niners. <laughs> Ni- Niners. Niner faithful. Quest yes. for six. Uh, we'll be back. More Now or Never is next.